If you wanted to buy the love of the mob, you put on a lavish show. Julius Caesar, called by some the greatest politician of them all, borrowed a vast sum of money to stage games. He had his gladiators fight in silver armor, but he knew it was worth it for the support that he would win. The arena was the place where politics met show business. So as the games outgrew the funeral tradition, they required dedicated venues. The world's oldest stone amphitheater, also one of the best preserved, is in the southern city of Pompeii. The fact that they build a building specially for it shows that it has reached a new importance in Roman society, and they create a brand new word for it. An amphitheater is a theater all around you. It's a 360-degree theater. This high wall built all around is to separate off this area so that just as in a bullfight, uh, the dangerous things that are going on down here, and it's not just humans fighting against each other, it's humans fighting against animals. They may have wild animals racing around. You've got to protect the audience, so you have this high wall to, to keep the action here completely separate from the audience. The games become such a part of life that certain elected officials are required to stage them and to pay for them out of their own pockets. The rich invested a lot of money in games, and they did so because there's a big political return. It is the best way to get people to vote for you to get popularity. And the, the biggest player in all this is the emperor himself. That is how he keeps the population of Rome on his side. And that's where we get this expression, bread and circuses, from. We tend to think of the gladiatorial games as decadent, depraved, the self-indulgence of a people in decline. Yet, they are meant to halt all that. They're a way for teaching people not so much how to live, but rather how to die. Ancient writers suggest that the Roman elite wanted people to learn from the example set in the arena. This is how a real man should struggle, endure, and overcome. When this amphitheater was built, and we're talking about 80 BC, they still had the idea that gladiatorial games had a moral purpose. They had a, a purpose in, in inculcating virtue, virtus, the Roman word uh, doesn't just mean a soft, nice virtue. It means the manliness of a man who faces up to battle and needs to be toughened for it. Gladiators were trained to experience what the ancients called a beautiful death, not to cringe, not to shrink from the moment that they knew that they were going to die, but rather to bear their neck to the executioner, to the other gladiator who was going to kill them. But by the time that Vespasian builds his amphitheater, the whole idea of making the Roman people more virtuous has gone by the board. It's, it's clearly for entertainment. We have to admit the terrible truth that gladiatorial games were barbaric, and that the majority of the combatants died a terrible and early death. These are men who are dying probably mostly in their 20s and most of the gladiators are dying in their first or second matches. Life was cheap in the ancient world. In many ways, the bloodiness of the Roman games is, is a problem for us. Um, we're, we're troubled. Why were, were the Romans extraordinarily brutal people to have this form of entertainment? Um, and, and part of the answer is, uh, of course they were. And what's, to me, interesting about the brutality of the Roman games is it's part of a mechanism for creating peace. The games operate as a safety valve. By watching brutality, violence down there, you stop the people behaving violently themselves. You stop people rioting. That's what they're really scared of, real bloodshed in their cities. You, st you stop that by putting on a performance of people you have paid to Make, make an art out of it, make an art out of death. 